Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 18th of January. Preparations in full swing as India's Ayodhya gears for Grand Ram Mandir opening. Pakistan launches retaliatory strikes inside Iran, stokes regional tension. And Sindhi activists hold anti-Pakistan protest, raise pro-freedom slogans. And now for all the details. Authorities in India are leaving no stones unturned for the consecration ceremony of the Grand Ram Mandir in Ayodhya. Huge preparations have been done including community kitchens and tents to host lakhs of visitors and to ensure their security. Take a look. India's ancient town of Ayodhya is all set to welcome a massive surge in visitors for the opening ceremony of the Grand Ram Mandir on 22nd of January which will be spearheaded by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Pilgrims from across India and even abroad have already arrived as authorities are leaving no stones unturned to ensure the smooth passage of the event at the site, which once marred by communal tensions. Huge security arrangements have also been done as about 4.5 million visitors are expected each month after the consecration. <laughs> चरण रखने से भगवान का धूली लग गया मस्तक में तो स्वर्ग न हो गया इसलिए हम लोग पधारे हमारा हम लोग का घर है जनकपुर जहां भगवान जी का ससुराल है उसी ससुराल से हम लोग आए हैं दर्शन करने के लिए Various makeshift tents and camps have been set up which include huge community kitchens that are operating around the clock to feed the visitors At one such kitchen Volunteers have been processing flatbreads, vegetables, lentils and rice to feed up to 35,000 people on a daily basis. So we have made arrangements. We have uh, done a mapping of all the accommodation facilities here. Public amenities have been upgraded. Uh, the numbers have been increased in the past one year. And uh, looking at the expected numbers in the coming months, we are uh, constantly upgrading our facilities. We are also making the appropriate arrangements for police and manpower so that uh, when people come here in big numbers, they should not feel any in inconvenience. The ruling BJP had long pledged completion of the temple project, which cost more than $240 million. PM Modi has made its construction an emotive issue in many speeches ahead of this year's general elections, widely expected to secure him a third term in the office. And heaping praise on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Wednesday said that PM Modi and his government have benefited the relations of many ally countries. Speaking at the World Economic Forum, Blinken highlighted that the US-India relations have been established to a new level and that conversation between both the nations have always underscored the significance of democracy and human rights. More than 2,800 representatives from 120 countries, including 60 head of states, have gathered at the event in Davos. Moving on, two days after Iran launched air attacks on terror bases in Pakistan, Islamabad on Thursday retaliated with strikes inside Tehran targeting separatist Baluchi militants. Reports suggest several locations were targeted by Pakistani forces deep inside Iran. The neighbors have had rocky ties in the past, but the strikes are the highest profile cross-border intrusion in recent years, for which Iran has demanded an explanation. However, Pakistan has recalled its ambassador from Iran and the Iranian ambassador to Pakistan, currently visiting Iran, will not be allowed to come back after Iran violated its airspace. Iran's foreign minister earlier said it had hit militants in the missile and drone strikes, saying no Pakistani national was targeted. Pakistan has not confirmed the nature of the violation or the location of the strikes. Pakistan reserves the right to respond to this illegal act and the responsibility for the consequences will lie squarely with Iran. We have conveyed this message to the government of Iran. 
We have also informed them that Pakistan has decided to recall its ambassador from Iran and that the Iranian ambassador to Pakistan, who is currently visiting Iran, may not return for the time being. We have also decided to suspend all high-level visits which were ongoing or were planned between Pakistan and Iran in the coming days. Meanwhile, Sindhi activist highlighted Pakistani atrocities in a massive protest rally on Wednesday to mark the birth anniversary of GM Said, the founder of modern Sindhi nationalism. A report. Hundreds of workers of the GA Sindh Freedom Movement took out a grand rally in Sanan town on Wednesday to mark the 120th birth anniversary of GM Said, the founder of modern Sindhi nationalism. The protesters carried banners and placards against the forced conversion of Sindhi Hindu girls and the enforced disappearance of activists from Sindh and Balochistan. They also raised pro-freedom slogans and demanded Sindhudesh a separate homeland for Sindhis. The political activist blamed Pakistan has been exploiting the natural resources under the garb of so-called developmental projects and converting Sindhis into a minority in their own land. There are several socio-political organizations in Sindh which advocate for a free Sindh nation, calling Pakistan an occupier. In a bid to tackle inflation, Bangladesh Central Bank raised its key interest rate by a quarter of a percentage point on Wednesday in the second hike since November. The repo rate used to inject money into the banking system has been raised to 8% from 7.75%. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who won a fourth successive term in elections this month, had earlier said that taming inflation and reviving the economy were her government's first priorities. Sharply rising living costs sparked violent protest in the months before the election as Hasina's government struggled to pay for costly energy imports due to shrinking dollar reserves and a weakening domestic currency. The economy has slowed sharply since the Russia-Ukraine war pushed up prices of fuel and food imports forcing Bangladesh to turn last year to the IMF for a $4.7 billion bailout. And thousands of tourists are flocking the Sinsan Top in Anantnag district of India's Jammu and Kashmir as snowfall has turned the mountain pass into a winter wonderland. Covered from head to toe in winter wear, tourists were seen clicking pictures, playing with snow and enjoying skiing and snowboarding on Thursday. Mesmerized by the scenic beauty, they expressed their admiration for the place. Pure Srinagar mein... पहलगांव में गुलमर्ग में कहीं पे स्नो नहीं सिर्फ यही स्पॉट है सिंतन टॉप जहां आपको मस्त बर्फ मिलेगा आपका जर्नी सक्सेसफुल होगा कम टू सिंतन टॉप एंड एंजॉय योर वेकेशन द मेजॉरिटी ऑफ टूरिस्ट विजिटिंग द कश्मीर वैली ड्यूरिंग जनवरी मोस्टली कम टू एक्सपीरियंस स्नोफॉल द वैली इज प्रेजेंटली विटनेसिंग द 40 डे लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ हार्शस्ट विंटर स्पेल नोन लोकली एज अ चिलाइकालान during this period, temperatures plummet to sub-zero levels in several areas. And now we have come from Pahalgam. It's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. So are you listening to the first time? Not the first time, but this is my first time in Kashmir. You should come here. The real heaven is here. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.